NBC University Theater, bringing you a full hour dramatization of one of the most outstanding works in modern Anglo American fiction, the John Dos Pathos novel, Three Soldiers, starring Dane Clark as John Andrews. For most young American writers, the period following the First World War was one of supreme disillusionment. Many had served in the war, enlisting in the hope that they were helping to build a better world. And when that world did not materialize, they suffered the inevitable reaction, rebelling instinctively against the horrors of war and all the things that went with it. In Three Soldiers, John Dos Passos tells the story of such a man of a highly sensitive young musician whose nature brought him into inevitable conflict with the regimentation of army life. Like all armies before it, the American Expeditionary Force of 1917 and 18 was less concerned with the personalities of its soldiers than with the necessity of winning highly impersonal battles. The army then was like an immature young giant, so young, so hastily organized, so lacking in tradition that, like a child, it could still be guilty of occasional excesses of unnecessary personal cruelty. The processes leading to the democratization of our armies have moved far since then, and a John Andrews today would likely receive far more sympathetic and intelligent treatment. But this is the story of how it was then, not now, for one highly sensitive young artist. And it is as a novel of protest, of protest against war, against unnecessary regimentation, against the denial of personal freedom, that Three Soldiers has earned its place in modern American literature. Now, John Dos Passos, Three Soldiers, starring Dane Clark as John Andrews. A few months after the armistice of World War I, in a tiny French town called Pozac, a young American dressed in the brown dungarees and blue shirt of a peasant made his way to the door of a small villa. Oui, what do you... Jean! Oh, Jean, it's you! Hello, Genevieve. Oh, Jean, darling, I thought I had lost you. Why didn't you write? How did you find me? When were you demobilized? If you'll ask me in and offer me some tea, I'll answer your questions. Oh, but of course. Come in, come in, Jean. Sit there. Mother's gone to Madame Vianos. How good-looking you are in those clothes. Oh, much better looking than when you were uniform. You've gotten brown. I've been walking out in the sun for a week. A week? Walked all the way from Paris. Oh? As a matter of fact, I'm flat broke and I'm pretty dirty. Oh, I like you as you are. I was afraid you might not. How could you think that? After what we've been to each other. Oh, Genevieve, I... Don't explain. We haven't seen each other for so long. Words would only keep us apart. You haven't changed? Did you think I could? You... You might kiss me. Oh, oh Genevieve. Genevieve, I've dreamed about this all this week. Walking all day under the sun... But the road like a white ribbon over the hills and along the rivers. The yellow irises and the blackbirds and the dust. And the little white cloud around my feet. And all the time I'm thinking I'm walking towards her. I'm walking towards her. Shh, don't speak. Oh, let me look at you, Jean. You must always dress like that. <laughs> Tell me about it. When you were demobilized and everything. I've been free a little over a week. And you walked all the way from Paris to see me? I'd have flown if I had a price of wings. What are your plans? You're going to stay in France, aren't you? Yeah, I, I, I want to finish some music I'm writing. and Perhaps I might get a job as a farm laborer. I'd like that. Oh, but it would spoil your hands for the piano. I don't care about that anymore. I want to compose now. I've, I've got to. All those months of misery, I'm, I'm going to set them to music. If I could do that just once. Maybe I could shove it out of my memory and be free to live like a human being Let's again. Let's talk see? about something else, then. Mama will be home soon. Genevieve. What? Uh, I don't want to see your mother. I can't talk to anyone else just yet. But, Jean, sure, Mother will be so can't happy. Can't you to... understand? I can't see you with other people just yet. Just as you like, Jean. Oh, I'm sorry. Look, can I see you tomorrow morning? 
Then maybe I'll feel more like meeting people. You see, I want to talk to you for a long while. You see, if... If I could only get it out of my mind. Those tramping feet, those voices, shouting orders, if I could... you was What is it? Tell me. I've deserted. Deserted? Couldn't stand there anymore. I wasn't immobilized. I escaped from a labor battalion. And if you're caught... They might shoot me. I don't know. Well, what are you thinking? I, I don't know. Desertion. It's unpatriotic, isn't it? All you had done was come down to see me without a pass. They couldn't have kept you there much longer. I couldn't have stood it another minute. But desertion. Oh, it, it can't have been as bad as all that. You, you must have been too sensitive, Jean. <laughs> Too sensitive? Then how do you explain Fuselli and Crisfield? They're certainly not the sensitive type. Who are they? Friends of mine. They deserted too. Just three soldiers who couldn't take it. And do you really want to know why? It began in New York City the day I was drafted. I remember the large bare room at the camp where they gave me that final examination which the army requires before it declares you fit for service. Hey, young fella, do you know how to spell imbecility? Uh, yeah. Um, I-M-B-E-C-I-L-I-T-Y. I-M-B-E-C-I-L-T-Y. Aren't you ready to examine me? Recommendation for this charge. Ah, what a typewriter. Hello, uh, hello. I've forgotten your name. Uh, Andrews, Sergeant. John Andrews. Yeah, Andrews. Well, uh, run around the room a little. Huh? No, not that way. Just a little so I can test your heart. Gee, these rookies are thick. Appearance, normal. Uh, say, how do you spell immature? I M M A T U R E. All right, put your clothes on, Andrews. You'll do. Is that all, Sergeant? Yeah. Take this to Barracks B, fourth building to the right. Shake a leg, soldier. You're in the army now. Get those lids served up. Come on, you fellas are slow as molasses. If we don't pass inspection, I get the works, not you. Come on, quick now. Hey, you pick up the cigarette button. I didn't get in this here army to be ordered around by no I tell you. It doesn't matter much who you order around by. You just order around, that's all. Yeah. Say, where are you from, buddy? New York? Yeah. Indiana's my state. Hey, get to work. There's the ID coming around the building no, again. Don't pick them up. Down the way, sweep them out. Hey, come over here. My name's Chris Field. What's yours? John Andrews. All right. Now, what do you guys stand around here for? Come on. Uh, dump them garbage cans. Lively. Oh, come as the officers. It's time for inspection already. We will never pass it. He's hurt. Corporal, who is this man? A new recruit, sir. His name is Andrew, sir. How long have you been in the Army? One week, sir. Don't you know you have to be cleaned and shaved and ready for inspection every Saturday morning at 9? Well, I was cleaning the barracks, sir. To I... teach you not to answer back when an officer addresses you, I'm going to... Ah, no, never mind. But if this ever occurs again, you may be sure the disciplinary action will be taken. Attention back there! Corporal, let man move. Get his name and serial number. Once more, boys, and don't try to slip any of those rough words over on this wine, man. All right. All right, now, lots of gut in the get and lots of kill in the Kaiser. Now, all together. Hail, hail, the gang's all here. We're going to get the Kaiser. We're going to get the Kaiser. How'd you like the film, John? All right. I've seen it before in Frisco. Gee, it makes you hate the Huns, don't it? <laughs> you from Frisco, soldier? Yes. Yeah. That's funny. You're from the coast, this feller's from New York, and I'm from old Indiana right in the middle. Say, my name's Fuselli. Mine's Crispy. Mine's Andrews. How long does it take a feller to get out of this place? I don't know. Some guys say three weeks, some six months. Yeah, but I want to get overseas. Yeah, it's swell over there. Everything's awful pretty-like. I had an uncle used to tell me about it. He came from near Torino. Yeah, where's that, Fuselli? I don't know. He's an Italian. <laughs> well, good night, fellas. I'm heading to sack. Good night, Fuselli. So long. Say, John... How long does it take to get overseas? Oh, a week or two, Chris. Yeah, as long as that. Gee, after that picture show tonight, I'd like to capture a German officer and make him shine my boots. 
and then shoot him dead. You would? Yeah, but I'd a sight rather shoot somebody else I know. Don't stay far from here, either. And I'll do it, too, if you don't let off picking on me. Well, who's that, Chris? That lieutenant. You know. Yeah, I remember the lieutenant. That big squirt Anderson seems to think because he's got a bar on his shoulder, he can do anything he likes to me. Do you really want to kill him? Not now. But he gets a devil started in me the way he teases me. I pulled my knife on him yesterday. He wasn't looking. And I caught myself just in time. Say, how old are you, Chris? Huh? Oh, I'm 20. You're older than me, ain't you? Yeah, I'm 22. Say, John, look at those stars out there through the window. Is the same stars overseas as they is here? <laughs> I don't know. I, I guess so. I've never been overseas to check on them. Yeah. I could kill that Anderson. <laughs> Present call for, sir. Hey! Well, I guess I can tell you now, fellas. We're going overseas. Oh, hey! 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 What happens now, John? Entrainment. What? Troop train, my friend. Troop train to the sea. Huh. <laughs> And we're slowing down. Yeah, let me at the window. Huh? What you opening the window for? <laughs> Some skirt, if you will. Hey, hey give us this kiss, girl. Yeah, yes, sir. Anything for our boy. Hey, hey let's just stand on tiptoe. Hey, John, quick. Hold on to my belt. I'll kiss her. All right. All right. Here, here we got you. Hey, 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 let me go. Let me go. Uh, just one more. Come on, you're too rough down your heart. I'm going to your mama. <laughs> Ain't no harm in having a little fun. Don't mean nothing. Yeah, just wait till we hit France. We'll hit it up with the mademoiselle. <laughs> Won't we, kid? Yeah. Oh, beautiful kid! Hey, 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 <clears throat> We've been in this replacement center for three days now. And evidently you men are beginning to think it's a picnic ground. Just because you made it to France without being torpedoed doesn't mean the war is over for you. Starting tomorrow, we'll take a 15-mile forced march every day. There'll be no passes. You can get your entertainment at the YMCA hut. Hey, you, soldier! Sir? Wipe that stupid smirk off your face. You're at attention! Dismiss the company, Sergeant. Dismiss! Hey, John, Chris, come on, let's get some donuts in the Y shack before the mob beats us in. What do you say, John? Oh, there's no place else to go. Come on. All right, you new men, line up there like good soldiers. Now, now, don't forget your manners just because you're overseas. Uh, here, uh, uh, step in here with me, boys. You been over long, soldiers? Uh, not very. You have been to the front? Yeah. Brought me back to the hospital. Doctor says I'm all right now, but I know I'm not. A lying fool. Why, did you have a bad time, soldier? <laughs> I won't go back again. I can't sleep thinking of the shape of the Fritzy's helmets. Boy. Have you ever thought there was something about the shape of those helmets? Ain't they just ordinary shapes? I've seen them in the movies. All right, oh, boys, get your chocolate. <laughs> How much? Uh, one franc. It's <laughs> one of those things that looks like a quarter. It's an awful lot for a cup of chocolate. Well, you're at war, young man. Just remember that. You're lucky to get it at... A... As for you there, huh? no more chocolate. And why ain't there no more chocolate, I'd like to know? I've told you there's no more. You've had two cups already. Now get out of line. Go away. You ain't got no right to tell me to go away. You got to give me some chocolate. You ain't never been at the front, you slacker. Now, here. You... Here, none of that. I'll report you. Is oh, there a non-commissioned officer no, in this hat? No. no, go ahead. You can't do nothing to me. I can't ever have nothing more done worse to me than has been done to me already. Is there a non-commissioned please, officer please, in this uh, Quiet, sir. Quiet, please. We'll get him away. Can't you see he's not responsible? Come on. Please. Get yourself together. Will you take it? Do many come back this way, I wonder? There's a convalescent camp near here. It's full of them. You'll be on your way soon enough, buddy. You boys don't last long at the front. I'll last out, though. I'll last out. Just you wait and see. 
No bullets got my name on it. I got a feeling. Fuseli was right in what he said. He played his cards shrewdly. He butted up to his superiors, made friends with the sergeant who got him his stripe as private first class. He might have made a good fighting soldier if he'd gone to the front. But the crazed veteran of the front of the YMCA canteen and the stories of grenade and artillery fire weakened his nerves. And then there was an incident in the barracks. Chance, foot! What's this man doing in bed during inspection? He's sick, sir. What's the matter with him? Oh, I don't know, sir. Get him up. But, sir, he... Get him on his feet! I can't do that, Lieutenant. What's your name, soldier? Andrews. Private John Andrews. Sir! Sir. All right, Private Andrews. I'm giving you an order. Get this man out of bed and on his feet. Well? I can't do it. Are you disobeying an order, soldier? If you call that an order, it's murder. This boy's been sick. He's been half out of his mind for days. It's inhuman. You talk like one of those college boys. Yes, sir. What school? Harvard. Well, listen to me, Harvard. In case you don't know it, there's a war on. And you take orders like everybody else, see? Yes, sir. Now, get over to the sergeant major and tell him you've been assigned to mess duty for a week for insubordination. Wait a minute. Salute. Yes, sir. Get going. Now, you. Yes, sir. Get this faker out of bed. Yes, sir. Come on, Roberts. Get up. Uh, the lieutenant wants you to get up. I, I... I can't seem to lift him, sir. Soldier! Can you hear me? I... Yeah. Get up! I... Can't. Sick. On your feet when an officer addresses you! Oh. Oh, this lieutenant... I... Did you really sick report on sick call at once? Can't... Get up. I'll give you three to get out of that bed. One, two, three. All right, you're under arrest. Fusella, you. Yank him out of bed. Yes, sir. Oh. He's playing. He's playing. Get an orderly from the infirmary. Lieutenant, I don't think an orderly is going to do this man any good. What's the matter? He's dead. Soon after that, we got orders to move. Crisfield and I, that is. Fuseli stayed behind. He pulled some wires and got himself transferred to a medical unit. And Chris and I went up at the infantry. Seems like a blur now, a, a muddy, dirty blur. I remember one afternoon we were headed toward the front, and a one-hour halt was called. Chris and I fell on our backs at the side of the road. All right. Fall out. Uh, What's the matter, John? You sick? Yeah, I'm sick. I'm sick of the whole mess. Yeah, there's no sense getting in the dole, folks. Here, have a cigarette. Oh, thanks. Uh, my feet hurt. wonder what Fuseli's doing now. I wonder, I wonder. He sure lost his nerve after that fella died in the barracks. Let's take our shirts off. It's nice and warm. Yeah, that's a good idea. Oh. Oh, it feels good to feel the sun and the wind on your body. You almost feel like a human being away from that stinking uniform. Huh? <laughs> you sure are crazy, John. I guess that's why I like you. Hey, look at what's coming. A donut truck with that Y guy in it. I guess he don't know he's heading toward the line. <laughs> Hello, boys. Anything you'd like from the canteen? Some chocolate, some soap, maybe? Got something to kill cooties? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good joke. Say, if you don't mind the suggestion, why don't you fellows put on your shirts? There's some nurses coming up in the colonel's car. I'd like them to see us. Maybe there won't be another chance. What do you mean? Ever see what shrapnel does to a man's uh, body? Maybe we'd better put them on, John. There's no sense getting in I can hardly bring myself to put the thing on again. I feel so clean and free without her. It's like, it's like taking up slavery again. Do you call serving your country slavery, my friend? You'll get into trouble, my boy, if you talk that way. You must remember that you are a voluntary worker in the cause of democracy. You're doing this so that your children will be able to live peacefully. You ever shoot a man? What? No, of course not, but I'd have enlisted. I really would. My eyes are weak. That's why I'm doing morale work. Ha! How long have you been over here? Just three months. But, boys, those three months have been worth the rest of my life. 
I've heard the great heart of America beat. Oh, boys, never forget that you're in a great Christian undertaking. Mister, get that thing started and get out of here before I do something. Now, here, there's no need to be... Go on, there. get going! Very well, but I'm reporting this to the officer in charge. You heard him, get... Hey, John, what's wrong with you? I don't know, Chris, I don't know. Everything I get, especially the thought that that... That is what will survive you and me. All that day and the next, the heavy stuff kept moving up to the front. We got closer and closer to the shooting war. By nightfall of the second day, we were led into a muddy trench where we were relieved a battered shell-shocked platoon and sat around and waited for orders. And they weren't long in coming. You stick close by me, John, if you can. We're supposed to clean out that patch of woods and join the rest of the company on the other side. Oh, is that all? Now, don't go taking any chance. Ah, what's the difference? That's us. Let's go, boys! <laughs> John, John, where are you? Uh, John, is that you? Help me. I can't see you. Keep talking. Oh, over here. Some water. I'm hit. Yeah, I... And got to get back. Colonel Evans. Well, I'll be uh, the brave Lieutenant Anderson. Help me. I got to see Colonel Evans. You won't need Colonel Evans, <laughs> Lieutenant. What? You see this? That's a grenade. Oh, what are you going to do? First, I'm going to pull the clip. Just like in the training manual. Huh? Throw it away. You'll kill us. Now, how'd that old clip come loose? Uh, you know, this thing is going to go off. Uh, I better just leave it here near you. You were gonna... Well, so long, no. Lieutenant. No, Chrisfield, come back. Chrisfield, that grenade. No, don't leave me. No, Now, can you beat that? Wasn't close enough. Well, the army's got lots of these. Maybe this will oblige you, Lieutenant. Don't mention it, Lieutenant. Gee, I better hustle up some rations. I ain't had nothing to eat since yesterday. <laughs> Uh, where's the rest of our outfit? Most of them got through the wood. They ought to be on our right. Come on, we better work our way over toward them. Uh, uh, not me. John. What's wrong, Chris? Uh, I ain't going back, that's all. John. You remember that, Lieutenant? Anderson? Uh -huh. well, what about him? Me and him just met up over in the woods. You did? I killed him, John. <laughs> I finally done it. Just like I said I would. Holy ma... Anybody see you? I don't know. But if they was to find out, I can't go back. Don't John. be a fool, Chris. Come on, nobody will ever know. You won't ever tell, will you, John? Oh, you know me better than that. Come on, let's get back. John! Hey, get out! Look out, John! Andrews, John. One four four two two eight six. This is the boy. Where's the tag? No tag. Another soldier brought him in. What is it? Leg? Mm, it isn't bad. Looks more like shell shock to me. Shell shock. Shell shock. Shell shot. Shell shot. Shell shot. What that color, soldier? Eddie. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Shell shot. Shell shot. Shell shot. I ain't going back. Ain't going back. Going back. Going back. Going back. Going back. Going back. No. No, I can't. I can't go back. Now, take it easy, young man. Easy. Why, you'll be going back home in no time. Going home? Where am I? 23rd Base Hospital. How? Now, don't try to talk. Oh. You've been in shock for... Well, Chris... Take it easy. You said I... I would go home? Yes, we'll be going home. Home? Oh. No, that would be too good. What makes you say I'll... I'll be going home? Why, because the war is over. 
Hey, soldier, get out of that wheelchair. Chris. Chris! Oh, you didn't desert me. I couldn't. Somebody oh. had to bring you in after that shell went off. You was like a crazy man, John. How you feeling now? Oh, pretty good. I, I got to Paris on a leave, so I looked you up. They say some of us are going to get to go home, John. Some of us? The lucky ones. Most of us has got to stay for the occupation. Occupation? Well, the war's over, isn't it? Well, some fellers say this is just the beginning. Oh, no. No, they're wrong. We're going to be civilians again, Chris. Civilians. And I'm going back to New York to write music. Maybe so, John. I'm just telling you what they say. Oh, no! No, not this soldier. I'm through. I've had all I can take, Chris. They can't keep me here. What is this man doing here? Visiting hours are over. Uh, This is my old buddy, Major. I... Yes, sir. I said attention, soldier. Report to the orderly room and leave your name, rank, and serial number. You fellas will have to remember the war may be over, but you're still in the army. And don't you forget it. From Hollywood, the NBC University Theater is presenting Dane Clark in a radio play based on the John Dos Passos novel, Three Soldiers. Another in our series of dramatizations of outstanding works by modern American and British authors. Productions of the NBC University Theater are part of the NBC College by Radio Plan. Information on how to enroll in college-supervised courses and how you can obtain free materials on the authors and books presented in this series will be given at the close of the program. Our intermission commentator today on the John Dos Passos novel is Mr. J. Donald Adams, author and critic, whose weekly column, Speaking of Books, appears each Sunday in the New York Times Book Review. We present Mr. Adams speaking to you from New York. The book you are hearing dramatized today is one of the landmarks in American literary history. It is notable for several reasons. First of all, it established in his career one of our leading novelists of the years between the wars. And second, it may be said to have set the pattern of American fiction dealing with World War I, and to an almost equal degree of that which we have so far had dealing with World War II. To appreciate the strength and extent of that influence, we have only to turn from a reading of Norman Mailer's The Naked and the Dead, or of Irwin Shaw's The Young Lions, to a rereading of this story by John Dos Passos. Three Soldiers was the work of an indignant and disillusioned idealistic young man, incensed at the folly and stupidity of war angry at its human waste, at its betrayal of the fine words in the name of which it was fought. It took note of the fact, too, that not every soldier is a hero. It was, in other words, at the furthest possible extreme from the romantic treatment of war in fiction. The book has been criticized, and justly, on the grounds that the three soldiers of whom Das Passus wrote were not typical specimens of the AEF that they were handpicked to strengthen his attack. Neither, I should like to point out, are the soldiers of the naked and the dead typical of the American backgrounds out of which they came. Now, even though the mood out of which Three Soldiers was written is understandable to the generation which is writing the war fiction of today, no one who did not live through the preceding atmosphere of exaltation, of high confidence, in the brave new world that was to follow the First World War, can fully grasp the intense reaction felt by the young men of Dos Passos' generation when they saw their beliefs and hopes crumble. Their successors, the young men who are now writing about World War II, had grown up in an atmosphere of disillusionment, in part created by such books as Three Soldiers. And partly for that reason, I think, we may expect from them work of a better balance of a more widely embracing realism 
such as we have already had in books like John Hersey's Into the Valley and The Bell for Adorno or Irwin Shaw's The Young Lions. Let me end by saying that Dos Passos, who is a pioneer in Three Soldiers, has shown himself also to be a writer capable of growth, capable of revision in his point of view. He would, I am sure, be willing to admit that his chief work to date, the trilogy called USA, stacked the cards in its picture of America during the 30s as much as three soldiers stacked them in its picture of American men at war. The capacity for change has been evident in his recent work. The moving finger writes, and having writ, moves on. Thank you, Mr. Adams. Our dramatization of Three Soldiers, starring Dane Clark, continues from Hollywood after a brief pause for station identification. back to my company, back to endless marching and drilling and standing motionless in the cold. Even for a while I thought of suicide, but I suppose I, I didn't have the courage for that. And then one day Chris gave me the first ray of hope in months. Chris was a corporal by then. I remember we were on a practice march. Hello, left! Five! Hey, John. Hello, right! Where's it, Chris? Five. How'd you like to get out of this? Are you trying to be funny, Chris? I'm serious. Tell me how and you'll save my life. I was up in the orderly room this morning when a preliminary bulletin came in. About what? They're setting up a new scheme so soldiers can study in Paris. Well, study what? Anything. If you're a college man, you can apply. Only thing, you better do it fast because just so many from each can go. Oh, Chris, do you think that... I don't know, John. Oh, they've got to let me go, Chris. They've got to. I, I can't take much more of that. I know. I've been watching you, John. When we get back off of this, Mark, you better put in an application. Don't say I told you, though. So, you want to go to college? That's right, Sergeant. Well, it just so happens there was a circular. And it also just so happens Colonel Robertson gave orders he couldn't spare any of the men from this company. That's against regulation. Now, uh, why don't you tell that to Colonel Robertson? Well, I will. Where is he? Hey, just a minute, soldier. Nobody gets to talk to the colonel without permission. No, well, just watch this guy. Hey, come back here. What is the meaning of this? Explain your behavior, soldier. I had to speak to you, sir. What about? It's about the school scheme. You'd better go and get permission to speak to me. Look, but there isn't time, sir. The list has to be in by tomorrow. That will be all. Sir, listen to me for just one minute. Will you? Please, sir, please. You don't know how important this is. I'm a musician by trade. If I can't get into practice again before I'm demobilized, I won't be able to get a job. You see, I have a mother and an old aunt dependent on me. My family has seen better days, sir. Believe me. It's only by being high up in my profession that I can earn enough to give them what they're accustomed to and the man in your position, Colonel. You must know what even a few months in Paris would mean to a pianist. <coughs> well, yes, as a matter of fact, I... Oh, I knew you'd see it, sir. Let me see your application. Here, watch it. Well... Harvard, eh? Uh, at ease, Andrews. Well, now, that is a coincidence. I happen to be Harvard myself. Oh, really, sir? I'm sorry I didn't know about you before, Andrews. You been in the outfit long? Since we came over. You aren't Kappa Mu, are you? Uh, uh, no, sir. Too bad. Well, I see no reason why this application shouldn't be approved. There you are, Andrews. Oh, thank you, Colonel. I knew you'd understand. Yes, well, now, you get that right to the Sergeant Major. And good luck, Andrew. Thank you, sir. Oh, pardon. I didn't know this study room was being used. Oh, that's all right. You're Jean Poussin, too. That's right. I'm in your advanced theory class. Oh, yes, you're Miss, um... Rod, Genevieve Rod. Ah. You play beautifully. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Do you play? Oh, no. I, I'm just starting to take up the time. 
Will you play something for me? All right. What is that? Something of my own. It is very beautiful. What do you call it? I call it to a girl with chestnut hair standing against the window and looking very beautiful and very desirable. Oh, that's a funny title. Who is she? You? Oh, oh perhaps I ought to Oh, no, no, no. Please don't. 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 I, I must. The mama is expecting me. Well, uh, let me take you home. Oh, no. Look, it's raining outside. I have an umbrella. Well... I'm, I'm really quite harmless. Oh, right. I won't be a minute. Now, don't run away. Look at it, poor. Stays as far. Well, only a few squares. Well, look, let me hold the umbrella. Hey, dear. Hey, look out for the taxi. Look out, look out. Oh, oh dear Lord, I'm so... Oh, how wet I am. Oh, my. It's down here to the right. Say, look, um, do you like the theater? Very much. Well, can I take you to see Louise tomorrow night? Oh, but I should cry. I'll cry, too. Will you go with me? Very well. I'll pick you up at 6.30. Very well, Monsieur Andrew. Oh, please, uh, John, huh? Very well, Jean. Uh, it's been a wonderful afternoon. Jean? Yes? Nothing. I was just repeating your name. <gasps> Look out, you're not even holding the umbrella over you. Hey, Andrews. What? Oh, Andrews. Remember me? Yeah, yeah. I know your face. Aunt you Sally. Just last me. time I saw you, you was going up the lines on a train with Crisfield. Chris, we used to call him. At Cardinal, don't you remember? Of course I do. Um, well, how's everything? <laughs> I've been in a labor battalion. That's how everything is. Oh, tough luck. I got sick. I guess I am yet. Take away to treat a fellow like he was slow or stirred. Were you at Cosney all the time? Yeah, what a hole. I guess you saw a lot of fighting, huh? Well, you should be glad you weren't with us medics. Oh, I don't know that I'm glad I saw fighting, Giselle. I don't know. I suppose maybe I am. I had a bad time even before they caught up with me. Court muscle was rough. Why can't they let a fellow go home? Well, you'll be going home soon, won't you? Well, of course, they can't discharge you until you're... Well, until you're well. Might not ever be well. Well, don't you find KP pretty dull? Oh, no worse than anything else. Hey, why are you in Paris, John? A uh, school detachment. What's that? Well, men who wanted to study at the university managed to get permission to study at the university. Study at the university. <laughs> Gee, I'm sure glad I ain't going to school again. Well, I gotta get going. Well, so long, Fuseli. So long, Andrews. <laughs> Well, you look very beautiful, crying like Camille. Without the Camille. Well, we'll fix that right away. Um, Madame? Madame? Yes, sir, Monsieur? Uh, uh, Camille Du. Ah, merci. Thank you, Monsieur. Ah, merci. Ah, Madame, Monsieur. There you are. Yes, sir. Camille's and all. Thank you, Jean. You're very sweet. Well, when I see you again. When do you wish? Now. Tomorrow, always. Not for a few weeks, Jean. Why not? Mama and I are going to the country for three weeks. We leave tomorrow. Oh? I know. Why don't you come down and visit us on Sunday? Well, I don't think I can get a pass. Oh, come without a pass. <sighs> you don't know much about the Army, do you? Only that the war is over, and I see no reason why they should not give you a pass. Oh, I'd love to come, Genevieve. Look, maybe I can swing it. Where is this place? What's that? Well, well where is that? Near Tour. We have a country house there. Do you like the country? Very much. More than Paris? Well, it's different. I like Paris as I like New York, but there's a difference there, too. Oh. Well, New York kind of beats you down with a billy club, and Paris strangles you with silken bands. You're a poet, Jean. No, I'm just unhappy. Unhappy? But why? Because I'm a slave, because I have to get a pass to see the girl I love. Jean? Well, you knew, didn't you? You must have known. Oh, yes. Oh, Genevieve. Yes, Genevieve, ever since I saw you, I've needed you. I've wanted you. And I, you. Oh, darling. 
All I right, soldier, break it up. No uh, loitering. Kid. Even now, they can't let me alone. Oh, come down to Poissac Sunday. They can't bother you there. We'll go rowing and take a picnic lunch. Oh, will you come? I'll come. I swear it. <laughs> Sorry, Andrews. You're on KP at the company mess on Sunday. Sergeant, just this once, please. You Sergeant. heard me. Look, I'll do double KP next week. I'll, I've, I've got to get away this See Sunday. See your chaplain, buddy. I'm only the first sergeant. Jacques! Oh, Jacques! When I got your message to be at this house, you know, I almost flew. How did you manage it? I told you I didn't think I could get a pass. Yes? I couldn't. Yes? Came without a pass. Oh, oh, it's so wonderful. Oh, they can't do anything to you? Uh, not unless I'm caught. Come along. Mama is outside in the station with a taxi. Mmm, smell that air. Gee, it's wonderful to be in the country on a day like this. Oh, there's Mama in the taxi. Hey, you there, uh, soldier. Jean, it's a military policeman. Don't say anything. All right, buddy. Let's see a pass. Let's see a pass, I said. You an MP? I ain't wearing this armband to a masquerade. Look, I'm in the Sorbonne detachment. Yeah? What's that? Well, the school detachment. The pass. Well, uh, you see, I don't have one. I, I I don't need one. You don't need one? <laughs> Let's go, Jack. Look, you don't understand. What is it? Please, nothing. I'll have to go see an officer and explain. Now, you go to your aunt's, and I'll come as soon as I've arranged it. No, no I'll come with back. you. Please go back. It may be serious. I'll come as soon as I can. All right, Sean. Good luck. I'll be waiting for you. Tough luck, buddy. Good looker. I'd like to have a date with her myself. Look, will you? I'm in the Sorbonne School Detachment in Paris, and I came down here without a pass. Okay, now look, is there something I can do about it, please? <laughs> School Detachment? <laughs> Gee, won't Bill Huggers laugh when he hears that? You pull the best one yet, buddy. Come on, come on along. Come quiet, and I won't put the handcuffs on you. <laughs> I got one bird, Bill. Says he's in some school detachment. First time that's been pulled, ain't it? <laughs> school detachment? You got any papers on you? You must have some sort of paper. Well, I should have a school pass. Yeah, but... you sure are. Gee, this guy's simple. Look for his dog tag, handsome. All right. Well, you heard him. Open your blouse. I haven't got any on. I forgot to put it on this morning. No tag. No insignia. Yeah, yeah, infantry. No papers. I bet you've been A-W-O-L one heck of a long time. Uh, better put the handcuffs on him. Now, well, let's wait a while. And when's the loot coming? Not for a while. Hey, what do you say we have a little cognac, Sarge? Yeah. But this guy's got money. You'll set us up to a glass, won't you, school department? Yeah, order up what you want. Here's some francs. Oh, thanks. That ought to do it. Two bottles. Might as well join us, son. Ain't gonna be no cognac where you're going. <laughs> going on here? Sir, I'm in the Sorbonne Detachment Lieutenant Station in Paris. Don't you know enough I... to salute? One of you men, teach this man how to salute. Yes, sir, Lieutenant. Oh. Get up. I haven't done anything. That's enough. Let him be. Get up. Get up off that floor. Oh. Prisoner! Attention! March! Oh, it's funny hogging back. This isn't as bad as I thought it'd be. What do you mean? This labor battalion? Yeah, well, a guy can put up with anything. That's one thing you learn in the Army. I guess people would rather put up with things than make an effort to change them. Yeah. Maybe you're right. Hey, put down that bag of cement. I, I got, got something to tell you. You want to get out of here? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's too risky. I got in the fix by taking the risk. If they catch his desertion, let him worth the 20 years of life, and that'd be the end of everything. No. Quitting time already? John? John? 
Yeah? See that barge across the river? I got it all fixed. It's now or never. We can drop into the water. You can swim under the water, can't you? Yeah, but I... Are you with me? Over there is freedom, John. Are you with me? Huh? Hey, 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 the guards are looking the other way. They won't miss us till they all get back to the truck. Coming. Yes. Yes, I'm coming. See you on the barge. Swim around here. Help me, will you? Catch my hand. Oh. There. Oh. Oh. Where's... Where's Hagenbeck? I'm afraid he's drowned. Huh? Oh. Oh. Where do we go from here? Uh, go inside. Change into his clothes. He had it all set up, huh? Uh, we... I have many of the American to desert. Hold quite, of course. Me and... Says now, then we go to the place of a friend where we will arrange a passport. Oh, uh, you have money? Some. Bien, bien, bien. Henri is not one to haggle over the price. Go now. Home round you. This is the house. You can stay here till nightfall. Bien. Don't move. Oh, it's you, Henri. Oui. Who's that guy? Holy smokes! John! Chris! Chris, what are you doing here? Well, same as you, John. I done blew the coop. What happened? Well, somebody must have seen me take care of Anderson. Are you sure? I ain't sure, but I had a feeling they was on to me. Well, what do you do now? Henri here is fixing it so as I can get to Poland on a Red Cross train. You can come along, Chris. I've got enough money to fix it. No, no, I'm not leaving France. You crazy? Maybe, Chris, but there's somebody I've got to see. A woman? Yeah. Boy, you're plumb out of your head. You need no. some money? No, no, but you can give me something else, Chris. What's that? Your gun. That was two weeks ago. And so you see me now, a, a deserter, an escaped prisoner. But if you are taken without your uniform, you can be shot. I don't intend to be taken. Oh, it's all too terrible. I was happy to see you. I thought you'd been demobilized. Look, I... I won't stay if you'd rather I left. Oh, no. What are you saying? Well, you see why I can't meet your mother? Not yet. She knows I was arrested. She might ask questions. We'll I... find you a place to live. A place with a piano so you can work. Oh, that would almost be too much. Madame Boncourt. I'll tell her you're a friend. The demobilized American. Come. Let's go to Madame Boncourt. Tonight we can have supper together with red wine and candles, and you can play for me. Oh, it's so long since I've heard you play, darling. Ah, mais certainement, Mademoiselle Roy, for any friend of yours, Madame Bronco has a room. Ah, s'il vous plaît, monsieur, your name? Brown, John Brown. No, Jean Brown. Age? Uh, 23. Age, 23. From? Chicago, United States. Etats Unis. Ah. Occupation? Huh? You must forgive these questions. Sometimes the police require a report. Oh, I see. Um, musician? Hmm. Uh, passport number? 1432486. Mm. Ah. Bon. You will have the room on the second floor with the piano. Uh, 20 francs a week. In advance. Oh, it's magnificent. It isn't finished yet. That's only the first movement. What are you calling it? It's called The Body and Soul of John Brown. John Brown? That's the name you gave Madame Boncourt. Oh, no. This, this is about another John Brown. Who was he? A madman. And what did he do? He wanted to free people. Jean, were 
you come to tea tomorrow? Some of my family will be there. I, I want them to meet you. Well, I, I have to work, Genevieve. Could you come for just a little while? Well, I'd rather not expose myself. Not just yet. I see. Jean, huh? what's going to happen to us? Well, nothing. In six months, the Americans will be gone, and I'll be able to live again. And then we can be married. And then? And then, in life. Under a different name, of course. Of course. And never telling anyone. Never telling. And hiding around corners if any Americans should come. No, I... Well, yeah, I suppose so. Oh, Jean, don't you see? It won't work. It isn't the kind of life I can live. Oh. I suppose I've known that all along. Why don't you give yourself up? Never. Don't you understand, Genevieve? It's a system I'm fighting. I've made a gesture toward freedom, and if the system doesn't crush me, then it's, it's just that much weaker. Well, you talk like a socialist. Well, I couldn't give myself up. I'd die first. Are you ashamed, Jean? Of what? Of being a deserter. Genevieve, I'm ashamed of many things in my life, but I'm rather proud of this. Can't you understand that other people don't have your notions of individual liberty? Are you, are you telling me that we're through, you and I? No, I... I have to think. Oh, do you love me? I, I did. And now? I, I don't know. Shall I take you home? No, I, I'll go alone. Will you come see me tomorrow? Perhaps. Bye, Jennifer. Goodbye, Jean. you from Mademoiselle Roy. Oh, thank you. Ah, some uh, bad news? No. No, I expect it. Huh. Monsieur works very late tonight. Yes, I'm, I'm finishing a composition. Uh, you will be lonely now that the rods have left. Have they left? Oui, does not Mademoiselle mention it in her letter? They have gone to the seashore. Yes, yes. She, she, she mentioned it. Monsieur, you have much to do on this composition. No, it's about half done. And uh, when you finish, do you get paid a great deal of money? Someday, perhaps. Uh, that is very good. You have not paid the last week's rent, you know. Yes, I know. I, I'm, I'm expecting some money by mail, perhaps tomorrow. Ah, uh, good night, monsieur. You will forgive me, I know. It is just that once I had here two Americans. They were deserters. They went away without paying, and the gendarmes after them. I hope they were caught and sent to the front, those good for nothing. Well, there are all sorts of Americans. Ah, oh, but of course, monsieur. Of course. <laughs> Come in. Bon matin, Monsieur Brown. Oh, good morning. I have brought you some breakfast. Breakfast? I, uh, I was a bit hasty last night. You will forgive, no? Oh, of course. It's, it's very nice of you. No, it is nothing, Monsieur. You have uh, received some money in the mail, perhaps? Well, uh, no, n not yet. It, it may be a few days in coming, madam. I see. Uh, it is most stuffy in here, monsieur. Perhaps you would like a window open. Oh, I'd rather not. It, it'll, it'll blow the music away. Yeah, I mean, no, monsieur must have fresh air. I will open the window. Go. So. That's the place, all right, Sully. Let's go. What's that? Hello. Bien vite, young what? Who's down there? Oh, no one, monsieur. Just a friend. It's an American. It's an MP. Oh, mais no, monsieur. Just a friend. Listen. They're coming up the stairs. You've told them, haven't you? I do not know what you are saying. Well, they're not going to get me. I won't go through with it again, do you hear? I won't. I've got a revolver. It's gone. Oui, monsieur. You took it. As part payment for the rent, you monsieur. You miserable wretch. Oh, it is no use, monsieur Brown. This the fellow? That is the one. The lady here says your papers aren't in such good order. No. 
I'm a deserter. Signed your name, John Brown, the registry. It's pretty stupid. Name's Andrews, isn't it? Penal battalion. Yes. Better get your clothes together. I have nothing. All right. Walk downstairs in front of me, Snow White. Could I... Could I take my music? Mister, where you're going, you won't need no music. You already got some. The curtain falls on our dramatization of the John Dos Passos novel, Three Soldiers, another in our current series of radio plays based on outstanding works of modern Anglo-American fiction. The adaptation for radio was written by William Hodap and George Lefferts. Our intermission commentator was the distinguished author and critic, Mr. J. Donald Adams. And our star, in the role of John Andrews, was Dane Clark, who will soon be seen co-starring with Alexis Smith in the Warner Brothers drama, Whiplash. Today's cast included Inga Yolis, Robert North, Tom Charlesworth, Larry Dobkin, Jack Crucian, Clark Cuny, Scott Elliott, Polly Bear, Don Diamond, Frank Gerstel, June Martell, Jan Arvin, Lou Krugman, Georgia Backus. Your announcer, Don Stanley. Productions of the NBC University Theater are currently being used in conjunction with college home study courses in Anglo-American fiction under NBC's National College by Radio Plan. This plan permits NBC listeners to obtain college-supervised, organized education at home by means of radio listening and supplementary study. For full information about the authors and how to take advantage of this home study plan, which is currently being conducted at the University of Louisville and elsewhere, send a penny postcard to College by Radio Courses, National Broadcasting Company, New York 20, New York. That's College by Radio Courses, National Broadcasting Company, New York 20, New York. Original music for Three Soldiers was composed by Albert Harris and conducted by Henry Russell. The production was directed by Andrew C. Love. Next week at this time, the NBC University Theater turns to the work of a modern British author, Aldous Huxley, as we present a radio play based on his novel, After Many a Summer Dies the Swan. program came to you from Hollywood. Two and one half hours of great comedy are yours tonight. Just listen. Ozzy and Harriet, Phil Harris and Alice Faye, Edgar Bergen and Charlie McCarthy, and Fred Allen with Henry Morgan as guest. Two and one half hours of radio's finest shows in rapid and very funny succession. Remember, for the best time of your life, the best time is tonight on most of these NBC stations. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company. <laughs>